So today I wanted to discuss whether or not our electric grid here in the U.S. is ready to handle the surge in electric vehicles that's going to be coming here in the near future. Um, by 2030, forecasts are that our 50% of all vehicle sales in the U.S. are going to be electric. Um, that's in less than seven years, guys. That is not a lot of time to have our electrical grid uh, get the upgrades needed to handle that surge in electricity coming. So a lot of my talking points in this video are going to be from a CNBC uh, YouTube video they released uh, just a little while ago, actually, I think in the last like week. Um, discussing the electric vehicles and whether our grid or not was ready to handle it. So there's a lot of good information in that video. I'll link to it so you guys can check that out as well. So I think people that don't drive electric cars really don't have any idea as to how much electricity they actually take to charge. So according to CNBC, the typical driver drives 14,000 miles a year. Now, if you take uh, a Model 3 Tesla, for instance, to drive that many miles, it is going to take 3,566 kilowatt hours to charge that vehicle throughout the year. So to put that into perspective, a U.S. traditional heating element hot water heater that's electric, which is what we all see in a lot of our houses, um, that uses about the same amount as it takes to charge that Model 3 Tesla driving at 14,000 miles a year. And guys, hot water heaters, electric hot water heaters, are one of the biggest energy consumption uh, appliances in a house. Now imagine a family with two, three, even four of those <laughs> plugged in. And you can imagine the demand on our electric grid to try to be able to sustain and charge these cars is going to be huge. And now let's look at a Ford F-150 Lightning. To drive that vehicle 14,000 miles a year, you're looking at 7,274 kilowatt hours uh, to charge that vehicle throughout the year. Now to put that into perspective, a traditional standard, traditional big four ton US air conditioner for a home, that uses about 4,950 kilowatt hours a year. So you can see the Ford F-150 is not quite double, but almost double to charge that vehicle and what it is to run an air conditioner. And we all know how much electricity usage air conditioners take. So I mean, it's insurmountable the amount of energy that we're going to have to need to charge all these electric vehicles. It's just, it's hard to even fathom right now. And let's not forget, the U.S. government has recently set a goal that by 2035, they want to completely decarbonize the U.S. electric grid. That means no more natural gas or coal-fired power plants. And as of today, right now, according to CNBC, 60% of all electricity generated in the United States right now comes from those fossil fuel type of power plants. So let me get this straight. We're going to have a huge surge in demand on our electric grid from these electric vehicles charging. At the same time, we're going to be pulling the lion's share of our power plants or our energy production here in the U.S. offline, which, as I mentioned, that 60% fossil fuel, coal, and natural gas power plants is 60% of the current electrical production. So what are we going to do? Now, what they're saying is, well, that's going to all be replaced by renewables, by solar, by wind. Well, <laughs> estimates say right now that to have our grid ready, we're going to need $3.5 to $5 trillion in new power plants or wind, solar generation, and transmission lines to be able to handle that huge surge of electricity coming from all these electric vehicles. And not to mention, I mean, new homes are being built now all electric. So we're having a lot more ovens, for instance, and heaters um, being powered by electric rather than propane or natural gas. So we're going to see even more electricity demand from that as well in the coming years. Now, I know we throw around trillions of dollars like it's nothing these days, um, but I can assure you it's a huge amount of money. Uh, to put it into perspective, the U.S. national defense budget in 2022 was $766 billion dollars. And to really put it in perspective, uh, the total GDP of Ireland in 2022 was $529 billion. And here's another hurdle. It takes a decade or more to go through all the regulatory agencies and the permitting process to get new plants or transmission lines built. So we're going to have to streamline that dramatically. And I mean, the good news is both Republicans and Democrats are talking about streamlining that process. So that is at least something both of them are getting behind. Now, it doesn't take a genius to figure out with a huge surge of electricity or electricity demand coming 
and not a lot of new power plants being built, in fact, being taking them offline, at least on the fossil fuel side of things, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that a disaster could be in our near future if things don't change dramatically quickly. So is our electric grid ready to handle the big surge of electric vehicles? In my opinion, not a chance. It's not even close to being ready. In fact, in Texas here, we can't even handle the current demand with the little amount of electric vehicles that are currently being plugged in to our grid right now. Now that's exactly why I installed this hybrid solar off-grid, on-grid solar system here on my home. It's because I am worried about the grid being more and more unreliable as we go into the future. So what does hybrid mean? Hybrid means that it can work both on-grid or off-grid. So I can literally pull the switch right here and disconnect myself from the grid and I'm completely running on my battery bank here um, and I've got 30 kilowatt hours of storage that runs my house at night or during the day if there's not enough sun to power the loads I'm using on my house. So here's just a brief overview of how this system works. Basically I have solar panels out in my front yard and all of that power comes into this it's called a hybrid solar inverter. This is actually the Soul Arc 15K, which in my opinion is the best inverter out there. And I'll link to that in the description if you're interested on it. But what happens is all that power comes right into here uh, via these conduits down here. And then that power gets distributed first on priority basis to the loads in my house. It feeds my 200, and, uh, 200 amp panel and feeds every appliance in my house. And this thing can run my whole house within limits. It uses, it actually can run for with about 15,000 watts being used at one time, which is enough to run my air conditioner, all my lights, all seven of my refrigerators, cooking on my induction stovetop, um, anything I really need. I just can't run like my well pump at the same time as my electric dryer at the same time as all of my refrigerators at the same time as my cooktop. If I use everything at the same time, I can go over that. I've seen it go as high as 16, 17,000 watts. Um, and when I'm in off-grid mode running on batteries only, I could use up to 12,000 watts at a time. So you do have to manage your loads a little more carefully if you use it in off-grid mode, but this can handle my whole house. If I lost power, I am a happy camper. I can still do everything I want to do. I'm not going to have to change my lifestyle much at all. So as I mentioned, the power comes from my solar panels into this inverter, and then it gets distributed out from there. The priority is my home panel, my home appliances. It, it sends there to power my house. And then any excess that I'm producing over and above what my house is using goes right into my battery bank here to use at night when the power, obviously when there's no solar power being generated, I run on this. And I can use this solar right here, this inverter to program, which I have my batteries, to where it only uses solar and batteries until my battery bank gets down to 20%. If my batteries get down to a state of charge of 20%, it automatically goes to grid and has the grid supplement my energy usage until the sun comes up enough to where it's enough to power all the loads in my house and then completely it just shuts the grid down automatically. And this all happens without me even thinking about it. It all happens, basically it's like a smart controller. It does all that for me, which is awesome. This also has the ability to send power back to the grid if you want to sell back. I personally don't, you may want to. I don't, I want to use or store all the power I produce. And when I am producing more power than I have the ability to store, which does happen occasionally when the sun's really bright and it's a moderate day where I'm not using a lot of air conditioner, which this system can power my four ton traditional air, air conditioner as well. This system's awesome. Um, but in the event that I have too much, I'll just, I'll turn my AC down to 65 degrees and let it cool my house off completely really cold. And then I can shut it down as we get into the evening and then my house will maintain that temperature or a comfortable temperature throughout the rest of the evening where I don't have to use it. So that's how I use the excess solar rather than sending it back to the power company, which then they make a profit off me. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to deal with all the permitting, all the fees they have, forget it. I want to be completely independent of the grid. Um, and I have the ability to do that by just pulling this switch down right here. But when you do have an off-grid solar program or project like I do, you do need a backup because there will be times when you can just can't produce enough energy or don't have enough battery bank to run. So you either need a gas generator, propane generator. I personally have a propane generator, but it's cheaper still to get power from the grid as my backup rather than my generator. And I'll keep an eye on that. And if that ever changes, I'll just go right to using my generator only. Now keep in mind, this system can run my whole house and my four ton air conditioning unit. But if I try and run that air conditioning unit at night, it will drain my battery bank pretty quickly. I mean, I'm talking four or five hours running my AC because air conditioners run it 3,500 watts, and this is roughly 30, 
kilowatt hours of storage. So do the math on that. That's roughly eight, nine hours that I have to run a, such a big appliance like that. So I tend to be very conservative at night, use window AC. Actually, I just bought a mini split, which is going to be coming actually today, delivered today. That should bring my energy usage down a lot when it comes to heating and air conditioning um, by not having to use the big four ton air conditioning unit that I have out front. And I'll also leave a, a card at the end of this video you can click on. And it is a video I made going through how long your battery bank can last based on what appliances you're using. It'll be, there'll be some good info on that. So go ahead and click on that. Now keep in mind that the typical solar system that's sold, you know, the guys going door to door in neighborhoods selling solar systems, those are not this type of system. Those are completely grid tied only, which means all the power that comes in from those systems just goes right to the power company. If you lost grid power, your system's useless. You can't use that power to run your appliances in your house. This is completely different than that. I want to be, a, I bought this specifically and installed it specifically so I could have power when there is none from the grid. So don't be fooled into getting one of those systems and thinking you're going to have something like this. You're not. And in fact, I'll leave a link in the description of this video to where you can download a PDF diagram of my entire system. Every part, every piece of equipment that I use to do this installation, which I did it myself, which if you don't understand electricity, I would not recommend you installing that yourself hire a licensed person. This is 240 volts. It can kill you. And also in that PDF, uh, I'll have info on the actual solar panel racks that I built out of pressure treated wood, a materials list that you can see how to do that. Now this channel has really grown a lot in the last, what, gosh, two months since I launched it. So I appreciate all the support, everyone. I really do. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please subscribe to it and you'll get more information and content just like I'm producing right now on how to run your own solar system, either off-grid or a hybrid system like this one. Thanks, everyone.